So in this video we're going to be learning how to create our own simple RESTful API. The reason for this is because I was going to do the design for the social network series but then I realized when we start adding AJAX to our social network series the smartest way to do it would probably be to have an API in the background that our web page can talk to using something like JSON and then get a JSON response back which will make our lives so much easier in the future. So to understand what a RESTful API is we need to understand how HTTP works. So HTTP has what's called verbs. And a verb is get, head, post, put, delete, trace, etc. There's a couple more as well. And the ones you're probably most familiar with are get and post because if you ever use forms, then you'll have set the action of the form to either get or post. A get request is where you send all of the data in the URL. So whenever you try to go to a website, you type in its URL. What your browser actually does in the background is it sends a get request. And you've probably heard of post before. Post is what we use whenever we want to send data to a server because in a GET request, your parameters are passed in the URL and the POST request, you can send data in the body of the request, which means it doesn't show up in the URL, which is why it's used for sending larger chunks of data. So now that we know what a GET request and a POST request does, we can start to understand what a RESTful API is. A RESTful API just means if you want to retrieve information from the API, you should use a GET request. And if you want to create something, if you want to send data to the server, use a POST request. For example, if I wanted to retrieve the information about a user, I would send a GET request. If I wanted to create a new user, I would send a POST request to the same page as the GET request. And if I wanted to update a user, I could send a PUT request. And if I wanted to delete a user, I would send a DELETE request. Those are the most obvious things you'll notice when we start to create our RESTful API. So now that we know that, let's get started actually creating it. So you can see here, I have two files. I have index.php and I have hasty access. The hasty access just takes every request sent to the website and sends it to the index.php page because the index page is gonna handle all of our requests. That's exactly the same as the MVC series and it's the same as this hasty access file in the uh, high code source code on GitHub. And you can see I have the browser open here, but we're not gonna be using the browser for this series. We're gonna be using a special client called PAW, which will make creating our API much easier. So the first thing we need to do is we need to handle post requests and get requests in our API. So to do that, we need to go to our text editor and we need a way to tell what kind of request we received. And in PHP, you can do that using a special variable called server request method. So if we say if server request method equals post, then we run this code and we'll actually put in another one if server request method equals get and we'll do get first and we'll put in an else here. So using this code we can handle get requests and we can handle post requests. If I just echo hello world when we get a get request and I echo post when we get a post request. Now if I go to paw you'll be able to see why we're using a special client for our API. If I send a get request as you can see here and I send it you can see we get hello world printed out. If I go to the browser and I click refresh you can see we get hello world printed out as well because the browser also sent a get request when it accessed the page but with paw what I can do is I can click on get and I can change it to post and I can press that and there you can see we have post printed out. So we're handling the different requests. But if I go to the browser and I refresh again, we're just gonna get hello world because we can't send post requests in the browser without using stuff like HTML forms and things like that. So we're gonna use paw because it's easier. So now that we can handle get requests and post requests, we're gonna do a final else and we're going to handle any other kind of request because if you go to paw, you can see there's a lot of types of requests we can use. And what we wanna do with our API is we wanna send a HTTP status code depending on whether or not the request was successful. You can see in paw, it says 200 okay because that means the request was successful. The, get, the post request in this case was successful. And if you've ever noticed, if you go to a page that doesn't exist, you'll see a 404 returned. That's a 404 status code. This is a 200 status code. HTTP has lots of those status codes and we're gonna use them in our API. So on Wikipedia, you can see the list of HTTP status codes. You can see they start at one and they go all the way up to five. If you go to four, we'll recognize the 404 error code. And what we're gonna do, if they use a HTTP verb that we don't support, we're gonna say 405, which means method not allowed. And you can see there's an example of when you would wanna use it down below. So to do that, what we're gonna do is go to our text editor and we wanna use a special PHP method called HTTP response code. And then we put in the number we want to display. In this case, it's a 404. Five error. So if I go to paw, if I change this to put, which isn't either get or post, so it's not one of the supported verbs so far, I send that request, you can see we get 405 method not allowed. So now that we've done that, we're gonna to go to our get request and we're gonna do that first. And in our get request, we're simply just gonna query the database and return a list of all of the users. So here I am in the source code of the social network series. And if I go to classes, you can see we have a DB class and that class allows us to connect to our database and query it. So I'm just gonna copy that class and I'm gonna use that for this series because our sample data set is gonna be our database from our social network series. So I'm gonna paste in DB here into our folder you can see there it is there. Now all I need to do is include the class. So I say require once and I want to require db.php. And what I'll actually do is I'll change this class from private static function connect to 
public function construct. That's how we create a constructor in PHP and our constructor just means when we create a DB object, it's going to connect to the database for us. And instead of returning PDO, we're going to say this PDO equals PDO. And then up here, we'll just create that variable private PDO. And then finally, we'll modify this instead of trying to get the connect function. We're just going to say this PDO. Now that we can create an object from our DB class, we're going to just delete that static because now our query function is associated with the object. And then what I'm going to do finally is just cut that, change that to host. And we're going to put the database connection details in the constructor. Just like that, we're going to put in DB name here. And then finally, we're just going to put in username and password. And finally, what we're going to do now is create a DB object. So we're going to say DB equals new. DB. And then in here, what we do is we pass in our host, which is 127.0.0.1, our table name, which is social network, our username, which is root, and our password, which is empty. Next, what we do is we use the DB object we've just created to query our database. So we're going to print our DB query, and we're just going to say select all from users. Now, if I refresh that, you can see we have an array containing all of the data from our database. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to say echo JSON encode to convert that array to JSON. And I just take out this print R. You can see it's all been converted to JSON. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this HTTP response code and we're going to paste it up here and change this response code to 200 to say that it was successful. The browser will automatically do it for us and the server will automatically do it for us, but it's good practice. So we're deliberately telling the client that our request was successful. So what I'll do is go to Paw now and I'll run that query again. And you can see we get all this JSON printed out. If I click on this, it converts it to JSON text. And there we go, we have a JSON representation of all of the users in the database. And this is how our API is going to return data. We're going to be able to use JavaScript to go in each one of these items and retrieve any information we want. We could use any programming language actually, but if we're going to be using it on our front end, we could use JavaScript to do all of this. This would make our lives so much easier when we start to use Ajax in our social network series. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to be taking this further because we're going to the users page. But if I just delete that and run it again, we'll get exactly the same result because we're not actually checking the endpoints. We're not checking whether they went to users, whether they went to some other page on the API. So we're going to work that out in the next video. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Reddit. And I'll see you next time.